<clears throat> Good morning, everyone. This is Your Waters and Woodlands with Keith Adcock. I'm back here on the back side of my property, and we are doing a little TSI this week. So, that being said, that is the number one way that you can improve your wildlife habitat, give them food, and give them cover create bottlenecks, define movement, uh, make money, and you may not make a lot of money, and it may, you know, it may take a little time. It, they, they may come in there and, and you'll get three or four estimates and, you know, you find the one that works best for you and what works best for your wildlife may be the least amount of money. So, you know, make sure that you communicate very well with the guy that, that's coming out to do the work. And this already being a small property, look at that trail going out of bedding right there. Coming in and going out. See, I already know that they bed up under these cedars. And then we just came off a hill. So this is running east to west. Most of your dominant winds are going to be south, east, southwest, northeast, northwest in the wintertime. Especially that being on the hill that cruising around the top third of that hill, which I've got that ribbon just south of that, maybe just north of it, off a few feet. But they're still going to cruise around the hill instead of going over it. But that east to west pattern is what you want as far as the bottleneck. Because both prevailing winds are going to go over you. So you're, you're going to be unaffected as far as scent. And you're just creating that bottleneck or line of movement, that edge of cover, deer creatures of edge. So they're gonna be in, when all this is thickened up, because all this will be gone in here, not all of it, but most of the, the large trees will be gone, and they'll have cover three, four feet high. They'll be either to the north or south of that 10 yards, 10 yards in the timber or 10 yards in that uh, the new thicket that I'm creating that new cover, that new food. So anyway, I digress on that. I just wanted to show you that. So I'm just creating a funnel from bedding area to bedding area. I mean, there's so much that could be done with TSI, but you want to do your research on it, folks. You see in here, there's a lot of red, red oaks. we got water oaks, different, different kinds of species. I'm leaving all of them. So they'll have plenty of food in here. But the canopy, if you look up, the canopy's pretty broke up. There, there's already grasses and forbs and things like that growing in here. It really didn't burn that well. It's kind of a bottom area. See like this tree's a little river, river birch, flaky bark. So those will probably be gone. I don't really need those. Um, but we're just breaking this up even more. Folks, that's all we're doing. This is the number one way to put some dollars in your pocket towards your wildlife management efforts. It's good for the wildlife as long as you're not completely clear cutting or doing a complete cutover. And if you are, you need to break that up into small pockets. If you have 80 acres, break that up into eight acre, 10 acre pockets. Now I will tell you, <clears throat> it's hard to find a guy, just like I said, to come out here on your land and do these timber stand improvements on small acres. I have 17 acres, folks. That is not a big parcel of land. I've got a high uh, density as far as when it comes to pine trees or marketable pine. That's the only reason they wanted to build a bridge and cross this creek and come in here and get these pines because... If I had two, three of me, there's some of these pine trees I couldn't put my arms around if there were two or three of me. And um, that's, you know, high value timber. There's a couple of black uh, walnuts in here and I'm, I'm letting them have a few hardwoods. If they're growing, kind of already leaning or falling into the creek, might as well go ahead and get rid of those because all they're gonna do is hit the ground and rot. And I've got some of these creeks and drainages in here, 20, 30 feet. I'm not gonna get in there and cut that stuff out. But all I'm doing is creating that, that edge, that movement. See a, a big rub there? 
This is right around bedding area. Here's a trail that comes out. Just real quick. If we walk in here, I'm just creating that movement from bedding area to bedding area. There's another one right there. I mean, they bed. Here's where they bed. Look, there's a pretty fresh one. This was done late season. So after all the leaves fell, I'll do a whole nother video on this. But these shavings that came off of this, I don't know if y'all can see. So this is fresh. And the reason I could tell are these shavings are above the leaves. So this was done after the leaves fell. It was done in late season, probably around December 15th, I would guess. Maybe even later. But you see, I mean, that buck is bedding in here. Probably one or two satellite bucks around him. But and they've been coming in here year after year. This is old. You see some rings in here. I don't know if y'all can pick that up, but that's been there a few years. And that's all I'm doing, folks. And I guarantee you, he's putting his back against that log. And he's been watching me enter and exit these woods. See another rub in there. He's been watching me enter and exit these woods. He's got a ditch here for security. Anything coming through that thicket in there, he can hear it. And he's, he's pointing that way, looking that way, with the wind to his back. And he's been watching me the whole time. He's got thicket all around him. I mean, this is what you want to find. You don't want to come in here scouting during hunting season directly after before all the leaves grow back on the trees is the perfect time. But anyway, this is part one of this segment. And guys, if y'all bear with me, I'll get better at editing these videos. But you're, you'll learn a little bit here and there along the way on these videos. So I'll get better at editing. You know, I'm more of an outdoors guy. I'm not a big computer guru, but I'm still trying to learn. So bear with me on that. If you've liked what you've seen so far, like and subscribe. And uh, keep watching part two and three of this segment. All right, thank you.